What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Elementary Season 5, Episode 8, How Sausage is Made. And, let's talk about it. So first of all, you have the case, which, frankly, I think I tuned out halfway through. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was just so run-of-the-mill, plain old case. I mean, I, I don't know, at first it, it seemed interesting. You know, the, it, watching the previews, it's like, oh... Somebody ate another human being, and people are making meat out of humans? Like, is that what's going on? It turns out, no. It was just this one time this guy apparently got grinded up and made into meat, and so somebody ate him, and that that was it. Okay. Like, that's, that's all? You're not going to actually have somebody making meat out of humans? No. No. It's just, that was it. This guy that got killed was apparently trying to like work on this new type of meat or something like that and I I don't know, I completely lost focus. It was just it was so run of the mill, like I even looked up at one point and they were questioning this one guy. And his reaction was just so obvious to me. I'm like he did it. And it turned out he didn't actually do it, he was involved though. Just like, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I I knew that that was coming. I knew that he was gonna be involved somehow. I knew just because they really they didn't do anything different. It felt so obvious to me. The only interesting thing about this case is how it ended. They end up finding a moment where they don't have enough evidence to convict the guys of it. So they try to trick one guy into flipping on his partner, and it doesn't work. Like, he realizes they don't have enough. And so, what is it, what's it going to take to bring him down now? And even then, I thought they may have been going a different route, where it sounded like Sherlock was just going to come up with a way for them, okay, they're going to get away with it, but we can keep them from being successful. And I thought that's what they were going to do. They were just, they were going to thwart the bad guy's plans, even though they're going to get away with murder, because there's no evidence. But what it turns out being is... They managed to thwart it to convince one of the guys to flip on his partner, who to flip on the partner who killed the guy, and give him up, and that that guy's gonna get rich now. I'm just like, why? That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just because he didn't kill the guy doesn't mean he's not guilty. Doesn't mean he's not involved. Extremely involved. And he's going to get off Scott clean and rich because you you convinced him to turn on his partner and gave him a deal to where he gets off completely free. I don't know. That just seems bizarre to me. It's like, wouldn't it make more sense if you just tell them, look, we're going to, we, we got these people to make it to where your product is not going to sell. So you're not going to be rich now. And that's all you tell them. And at that point, they both try to turn on each other, so now you've got enough to bring them both in. <laughs> like, you've got a confession from both of them, you get to bring them both in. Either that, or, you know, one of them says, look, I'll take a deal, but it's still not, it's still jail time. It's still, they're being punished. But as it stands, you offer this deal to this other partner in crime that says, look, you get off completely free, and you make money. If you, te if you tell on your partner here, that's all you gotta do, is just... Turn him into the... You think he's going to say no? You think he's going to... It's just so dumb. And I don't get it because this show doesn't normally do this. You know, it, the case itself wasn't that great. And normally it's a mind twister. It's something where you have to actually... Ooh, I have to think about this. It's not normally this obvious to where all you have to do is see the guy get kind of nervous when they come in to question him. And that's all it takes. I, as soon as I see him get kind of nervous, I'm like, he did it. The other part of it was actually a bit more interesting, however. And this is kind of what keeps it from being a completely awful episode. Because this one guy shows up at the beginning of the episode. He brings this crown for Sherlock. And Joan finds out he hasn't been going to meetings. And so ultimately we, we come to find out that Sherlock is getting bored by meetings. Because his intelligence is so high, he thinks. That he's more clever than anybody in the room. So his boredom is setting him faster. So that means... He needs to really push himself to the edge. He needs to put himself in dangerous territory outside of these meetings to kind of test himself. 
because that's what it takes to keep from getting bored. Now, to him that makes sense, but of course to Jones it's like, no, that's dumb. <laughs> you know, you're risking remission. You know, you're you're risking no, not remission. What's it called? Remission is for cancer. I, I don't know why I said remission. I'm tired. I'm really tired. Um, but pretty much you're putting yourself at risk by not going to these meetings. And you see her point, but at the same time you can see that she's, she doesn't want to push too hard. Because she knows if she pushes way too hard, he's going to shut off. He's not going to agree. So it's just nice to see her sort of make the smart play by not pushing too hard. By just telling him, look, as your friend, I disagree. And ultimately, he comes to realize, you know, maybe maybe he does need to just sort of let everybody know exactly what he's feeling. He needs to talk about all of this. He needs to talk about being bored. He needs to talk about how he feels like he's the most clever person in the room. He needs to talk about all of this because that's part of what these meetings do. It's a chance for you to let it all out, and that's what it is. And so to see him at the end of the, the meeting, you know, start talking about I am the cleverest person in the room, and I thought that... You know, I thought that had to do with my boredom, and then I start to realize that maybe it's my arrogance and how that might affect me in the long run. And I'm just like, this is interesting. We're getting to see a side of Sherlock that I think he has never seen before. You know, this side of him that realizes he can't be arrogant. He can't always continue to just be the smartest person in the room and just completely believe that about himself and not rely on others for help ever. Because if he doesn't rely on anybody for help... Ultimately, that's going to lead to him making some decisions that are bad decisions. So, I, I just like the fact that they're growing his character. And it's the one saving grace in this episode. Because, like I said, everything else was stupid. The case was stupid. How it ended was stupid. This is the part of it that keeps it just above water. It keeps it from completely slipping into crap stuff. Because so far, this season has not been as good as it has been in the past. You know, the past few seasons have dropped off a little bit, and I want to see better. I want to see more interesting things. I want to see more interesting cases. I want to see cases that are going to make me think, not cases like this, where it's just so simple and so dumb how it ends. And I, I don't know. I, it's bizarre. It's a bizarre choice because the show hasn't been doing that. The show has been one of the the smarter shows as far as its decision making because even though not every episode is great most of the episodes are good you know they're they're average they're good they're not bad but they're not great either so it's kind of somewhere in the middle and a lot of it is down to its decision making you know the cases it brings in most of them are clever most of them they make you think they're not straightforward the stuff on the outside of the cases the the character decisions most of them are well handled. You know, they're not characters acting unlike themselves. You see Joan b being completely heartfelt. You know, wants to help Shenwell throughout most of the season. All of it feels like these characters are remaining true to themselves. So this show has done a good job of doing that. This is the first episode where, with the case, I feel like they made some stupid decisions, and it costs the case desperately. Like I didn't get involved with the case after that. I hate the case after that. So, ultimately, the stuff on the the outside of the case was good. The stuff with Sherlock and him discovering kind of more of himself, deciding to go to the meeting at the end of it, talking to the people about all of that stuff at the end of it, all of that was good. It was, it's more interesting character development. It's more interesting, you know, what's going to happen with him? Is he going to ultimately start to lean on Joan more? Is he going to continue to do things by himself? But the case was it didn't feel like a Sherlock case. It felt like, I hate to say it, but it felt like an episode of Bones. I mean, that's, <laughs> there was one other case that felt like that this season, but not as stupid. This one, the stupid decisions were there. The stupid logic was there. It was not an elementary case at all. So hopefully, that is the last of the dumb decisions this season. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What do you want to see change? Do you think this case was stupid like I do? Do you not agree with me? Let me know. We can talk about it, discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future elementary reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.